glory be to God. Amen. Um, so we're going to go straight to the part three, and um, this is going to be the concluding part of the ongoing series, um, Love Boundaries. So we, like I said, there's nothing bad about love, and, 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 and we said before that setting boundaries in love is not setting boundaries with who you love. You are, not, you are not building a wall to disconnect some people from your love or, or keeping people away from you. We're saying that why you choose or why you make a decision to love, love others just because the Lord has instructed, has commanded, as one of the most important commandments that we're given as believers, that you should love God, you should love others like you love yourself. And because of that, you have decided that, um, uh, you know, uh, my spiritual train is going to run on two rails and trust and obey. And because you have said, Lord, that I must love my neighbor as myself, I am going to obey that instruction. Uh, but the point is that while you are obeying that instruction, you need to build boundaries so that you don't do it in error. Boundaries are very important for everything we do. And one of the main reasons I need us to understand why we build boundaries here, um, the, most, um, the most dangerous thing to how we love, to how we deal with people, to how we, how we do Christianity and how we do life is immorality. So if there's anything we're building boundaries away from, most importantly, like we said last week, from beginning to the end, build boundaries against immorality. The devil is corny. The devil is tricky. And every time you talk about immorality, one of the biggest manipulative tools of the devil is sex. We said it last week. He's so manipulative about it. Let me tell you how manipulative the devil is and how much the devil can ruin and destroy your life if you do not create boundaries with sex. You know what he does? Before you get married, he will be dangling it in your face like this is sex. You need it. You can't do without it. So to, to make you feel condemned, to make you feel guilty, to make you feel, feel low. And guess what? When you are married, the first thing the devil takes out of your marriage is the same sex. That's why you see couples, when couples are having problems and issues in their home, when they go to marriage counselors, you know one of the first, one of the most important questions the, the, the counselors will always ask them, how is your sex life? So the devil gives it to you when he wants to destroy you pre -mar pre before marriage. And then when you are married, because God created it as a bonding, as, as a tool to keep two as one, the first thing the devil takes out of your marriage is your sex. The man no more feels anything for the woman. The woman is more, sometimes, especially for when the children are in, the woman is more, is, she's more focused about the kids. And as a matter of fact, when, as the time goes on, when, there is, when, when you do not, husband and wife do not have that moment, they come together, and that intimacy is no more there, the marriage begins to die. Arguments, be things they will not necessarily not argue about before begins to come up. So it's a manipulative tool. That's why we need to set boundaries before and even in marriage. And you see, one of the things for me, um, I, what, you know what I feel for this generation? I feel more of compassion for this generation than hunger. Because this is a generation that is so oppressed and pressured by the devil. In our days, immorality is immorality. You are even ashamed when you do it. You are even ashamed when you do things that are contrary to the will of God. And when I was growing up, when I was in my 20s or early 30s, at least the early 30s, but now we do not even know what is wrong and what is immoral and what is moral. This is the time that Christians are asking the question every time. Pastor, if I do this, is this sin? Because we don't even know what sin is anymore. So I feel very compassionate towards this generation. You guys are so under pressure. When I was growing up, internet is not throwing stuff at my face. I, 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 I'm not, um, they, 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 there's no rights to do anything. Like we have different rights now. If, if it's not good, it's not good. But it's a different ball game now. And so that's why, that's why I need to let you know that whatever stage of life you are in your journey with God, never feel condemned. Because you know what Jesus did? Jesus is so 
concerned about your generation as he has always been with the previous ones. That he has already made a provision. All you need to do is just to connect to his grace. His amazing grace. Let me tell you, you need Jesus to do right. You can't do right by yourself. You can do bad by yourself. I think I've seen a movie like that. I can do bad by all by myself. Is that right? Yeah, you can do bad by all, all by yourself. But it's hard to do right all by yourself. Because the devil is always singing around you. We need to get wise. We need to get wise. And, and, and one of the things that we need, also need to understand why the boundaries are important is because there's so many structure now, unlike we used to have it, there's so many structure now built around your life that, is, that needs to lure you into immorality and into disobedience. And so a lot of us, what we do is that we just, we just dance in to what the devil, the trap that the devil, the devil has set for us. That's why I was telling you last week that you do not evaluate temptation. You flee from it. Don't just stay there and say, oh, can it burn me, this fire? Let me touch it. Can it burn? Will it be cool to me? Fire burns. Run. We don't need to evaluate it. But that's what most of us do. I've seen people say, you know what, all my friends are not born again. All my friends are not believers. They, are, they, they do bad stuff. But me, I, I go to church, me, I believe. And so I, I think I'm cool. I, do I have to just hang out with church people alone? No, you don't have to hang out with church people alone. But you are in trouble. If everybody that influences your life are all unbelievers, they are not saved. Their mentality is different. Their paradigm is different. And this is why we need to pay attention. So I want us to look at, in order to, for us to really um, make a home drive with that um, commandment from Matthew, I want us to look at that scripture again. And that's going to be um, the purpose of our teaching today. In Matthew 22, verse 37 to 39, let's look at that scripture. It says, Jesus, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor. Come on, everybody say the last word with me. Ask what? Come on, we're going we to say that like firebrand, passionate believers. All right? And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as what? Yourself. As yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. The greatest relationship you can have with your neighbor is it, 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 the, the, it, loving yourself precedes every relationship you can have in your life. It's very important. Because you know what? If you do not feel good about yourself, it's difficult to make others feel good. And that's why they always, the, the popular saying, hurting people hurt people. And go and ask any of those kids that take guns take guns to school and shoot people. Most of them are in pain. Most of them have no, they, have, they, are, they are hungry with life. They are hungry with themselves. They feel the world is not dancing to their tune or something is going on. People, you see, when people move on to hurt other people or to make life miserable for other people, one of the most important things that happens in that equation is the fact that their life is miserable. Have you ever spent some time around someone who who is, who, is, who is depressed. No matter the joy you bring to that environment, it's just a matter of time. That person will make you depressed. If you are not careful. We need to, the, 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 the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. It is important. Why is it important for us to love ourselves? Why is self-appreciation important? These are some of the things we want to look at today. How much of yourself do you pay attention to? How much loving self have you done? I know, I know sometimes it's a very complex statement in a religious gathering like this. Um, some of you might, just, just don't, don't turn off on me. Just have patience, let me break it down. Because some of you might already in your mind be programmed that, why, why must you love yourself? Why, why, why should I love myself? And we're, and we're going to get there. It's very important that we do. 
You know, and, and when we say set boundaries, we say set boundaries. You will need these boundaries even in protection of loving yourself. In a bit to love yourself, you also need to create the boundaries. And the, the, and, and the first thing we need to understand among ourselves is why or what is loving myself not? How can I not love myself? Because I don't want us to get carried away and get um, frustrated about the fact that we have to love yourself. What, why is it not? I mean, what, 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 in what way should I not love myself? Let me, give, let me share a scripture with you from the book of Psalm 139, verse 13 to 15. This, this is about David and him evaluating his life and evaluating, uh, uh, make, getting an impression about himself. He said, for, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. How many of you realize that in your own life every day, that you are just so precious, you are, you are uncommon, that God took time about your life. Your works are wonderful. God doesn't make junk. We said that before at Ignite. If you are God's product, if you are one of the things that God is giving to the world, if God is saying that I, I put you in this world as a sign of how wonderful I am, that means even people that make, Apple is not going to put their logo on a product that does not make sense. I've seen, have you, how many of you have seen products when they fail, the producer withdraws them from the market? How many of you? They call it recall. You are a product of heaven. God knitted you, purposefully made you different so that you will, you will bring glory to him. I mean, an artist is celebrated by the quality of his artwork. The only reason why you will respect is it Picasso or what's, what's one of those popular um, French um, artists? The only reason why you appreciate them is because of the quality of their job. So that's who you are. David was testifying through that scripture that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. David, is, David was doing some self-loving right there. Some self-appreciation. Was, David was, let me tell you, when, the way you see yourself will, will determine the way you treat yourself. I've heard people say that words that people said to me made me, a word that that sister just told me, a word that, that just made me feel so bad and that, that they just broke my heart. But guess what? Every day you are telling yourself words that makes you feel worse. Unknowingly. The point that we're, that we're, I'm going, just hanging with me there. You need to do some self-loving. You need to appreciate the brand that you are. The privilege of being in a family that has been destined to be world changers. There's nothing, let me tell you, there's nothing in my life, if you tell me to sit down now in a minute, that I would prize over faith. The beauty of my life starts from when I connected to Jesus. And when I realized that I'm reborn, I, I'm a new creature in him. Praise the Lord. Without, let me not bore you. Let me quickly run into some of my notes here. What loving yourself is not. Now, actually, what loving yourself is not are those things that you should build boundaries on. In a bit to love yourself. I don't want anybody to live here today in error and thinking that when I do this, I'm loving myself. It's not. It's not. Build boundaries again. Number one is that it's not honoring your feelings. The world, we're, in a, we're, in a, we're in a feeling driven world. Now it's all about your feelings. People should not hurt your feelings. People should understand that this is you. This is what you feel like doing. I mean, I can feel like, I don't know why it's not just approved for me to, to do some crazy stuff when I feel like. Let me tell you what, you can't live by your feelings because your feelings change. How many of us know that we have had some stupid, crazy feelings in the past? I'm the only one here. Every one of you, your feelings have always been right. I've had some crazy feelings, and today I'm grateful that God did not allow me to operate on those feelings. Feelings cannot, feelings, feeling is for babies, it's for infants. Children live on feelings. So you're not loving yourself by honoring your feelings, that as long as I feel this way, then it is the right way. That's number one. Loving yourself is not changing your physical appearance. That is not loving yourself. 
It's not. You know, I just, I just, I just want to do myself loving. And can you just imagine? I mean, I, I'm loving myself, and I just want to. It's not, it's not changing my physical appearance that makes, that really makes me love myself. I've seen people that decided because they feel that they will look actually feel better about themselves by getting lighter because they are dark. And the mystery of keeping that light complexion became a thing of depression to their life. When it gets to a point, you will begin to hate who you see in the mirror. There's nothing like how God... God, did you see what David said? He said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully... Made. God does not make junk. You are beautiful the way you are. You are so beautiful. You don't have to change from being a guy to a girl. God does not make errors. The word might tell you otherwise. But it's, 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 it's either the word or the word. I love the whole drum Kennelly song. Whose report will you believe? Will you believe the word of God? Or do you want to believe the word and what the word communicates to you about you? What loving yourself is not. Loving yourself is not being full of self. It's not being arrogant. My way or the highway kind of people. That's not loving yourself. I love myself. Anything, I, anything, anything as it comes to my heart, that's how I do it. Have you heard some people, they will say, you know, I, another area, if you come to any of our small group and all our training classes like Grow Track, uh, you must have heard this there. Um, please, don't, don't say anything that just comes into your mind. That's not smart. I love to say the way it comes into my mind. Me, I just love to say my mind. How many of you have friends like that? Don't look at your neighbor. This is a wrong time. <laughs> so they don't think you are talking about them. Amen. Yeah. So it's not being full of self. It's not glorifying weakness or shortcomings. Some people glorify shortcomings in a bit to love themselves. This is who I am. Take me the way I am. You see, believing is what leads us to becoming. Every believer is heading to become something. Do not celebrate who you are now if you are a mess. Don't expect the world to just fall at, at, the, at your feet, even if this is not who Jesus wants you to be. I've seen some people that will never change just because they love themselves the way they are. Even though they are a mess. That's not loving yourself. I tell a lot of my young friends that one of the things that I'm excited about in my life, and, I, and, and the same should apply to you, I'm more excited about who I'm becoming than who I am. So, that's, so when, when, when the, 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 the pain and the challenges and, and the discouragement of the moment begins to depress you, tell yourself that I'm becoming something better than this. I might not have a job here, but God, to God be the glory, the best job is waiting for me. I'm excited about who I'm becoming. That's the way your life should roll. Because every one of you sitting here have no clue where the Lord is taking you. I'm telling you, some of you here, in another five, six, ten years, you're going to look back and say, my God, how amazing. I never believed that I would be in this position. Be excited about who you are becoming. Jesus is on a journey with you. Amen. Loving yourself is not settling for the weak you that you have today. I just like... I like yeah, I love, I love to gossip. I love, I love to fight. I, I quarrel when I feel like that's who I am. Take me the way I am. Don't be that kind of person. You're a mess. Present the best of you. Love the best of you. And because you love yourself so much, that's why you choose not to live yourself the way you are. Do you know it's so much love of self that makes us even connect to Jesus? I've said it before, maybe, maybe some of you will be hearing it for the first time. Nobody actually preached, I, nobody met me on the way with a tract or stopped me and started preaching to me. Or I didn't go to a crusade 
And they say, if you want to give your life to Jesus, come out. And I came out. No. One of the first things that connected me to the Lord was how much I feel that I really desire to achieve in my life. I said, I, I just wanted to be excellent. I just wanted to do great stuff. I just wanted to, I just wanted a, I wanted a morally standard life, a, 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 a life that attracts others, a life that will impact others. And I knew that there was no other way for me to achieve it by myself. And I decided to connect with Jesus, who can take me to the level that I can't get to by myself. Is Being born again is a function of loving yourself. Who wants to perish? Who wants to spend eternity? You are here crying and following Jesus because you love yourself so much and you, you, you do not want to live a world. See, the only way to live a world of uncertainty is to have a certain God on your side. So I, I just want us to connect with this as I go on. Now, 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 lastly, loving yourself is not indulging yourself. Nobody ever preached to me about drinking and smoking. I just love myself too much. And, and maybe one of the things that also helped my, my judgment was that I, I grew up with a stepmom who was a psychiatric nurse. She was, she was a psychiatric nurse, yeah. And so sometimes I go, I go to see her in the hospital and I see crazy people, how they behave. I see how she talks to people that are like my dad's age. And she talks to them like babies and I just said my life will never be a mess. I so, lo I so loved myself. I stayed away from alcohol. I stayed away from drinking. I was in university if you, some of you will not know the University of Benin, it's one of the things that the University of Benin is known for is for, for hip-hop, is for bubbling. We, we, we go to parties, we go to everything. But I've, I can't count how many times I'll sit in parties. I will be drinking juice, all my friends will be drinking. I look low, I look, I look like it. They say, you've come with this, your juice again. Coke. Some, some will even joke when we go out, when they are asking everybody, what do you want? Before I even say it's one of them, hey, don't worry, just give him Coke. He will drink Coke. I never wanted to mess up my mind. I don't want to indulge in anything that will make me crazy. I don't think you love yourself when you soak yourself. You see, some, somebody will ask you, will you, will I go to hell if I drink? You're not going to go to hell if you drink, but you, can, you might go quicker to heaven than God wants you to come. Then another thing is that some people are even drinking, they're already living hell on head. When a man begins to pee on himself, he's, live, he's in hell already. You got to love yourself enough to know that you cannot indulge yourself in a mess. These are some of the things that we ought, all, always need to understand as believers. I'm going to go very fast. Uh, one of the reasons why we, why we encourage that you have your sermon notes and take notes um, is also, also to help us catch up as quick as possible. So take your sermon notes and make sure that you are uh, you're writing down. If you're not able to get everything, now don't worry. It's okay. Just go. By, by Tuesday, the media will have this message on the app. Just listen to it and just take notes. Take it all over again. So how do we love ourselves? And we've talked about how not to love yourself. I'm going to spend the rest few minutes to quickly tell us how do we love ourselves. How to love yourself. The Bible said you love your neighbor as yourself. If you love yourself enough, extending that level of self-appreciation and satisfaction to all that will be a piece of cake. You got to have love to show love. Let me, let, me, let me use a product as an example. How many of you have heard the word, you like to show off? How many of us have heard the word? We tell our friends that. You like to show off so much. You know what you are saying? You are saying that they have something and they like to flaunt it before others. So in the first place, they have the thing. You want to show off your new shoes because you have a new shoe. You can't show off love. You can't show love if you do not have love. You see, somebody who has no happiness in their life, somebody who is miserable, they don't, have, they don't have business with making other people feel good. I got to feel valuable. I got to feel that I have something to offer. This, 
sometimes you got to sometimes let me tell you you many of you here it's not it's not being arrogant let me let me let me let me warn you first it's not being arrogant to sometimes look at yourself in the mirror and say the world is lucky blessed to have you okay these are the only spiritual people in the church everybody here left their heart in the car i'm telling you the truth Sometimes you got to look at yourself and say, this world is so blessed to have me. What would this world have been if I was not born? It's not arrogance. It's the truth. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is an equation in this world that you alone can solve. You're just not paying attention. You just don't know. You're looking, to, you're looking at yourself too low. And let me tell you, if you are somebody who makes that daily confession every day that the world is blessed to have you, you will do everything not to be a mess to the world. I see myself as an ambassador of Jesus. Everywhere I am, I am conscious of it. The reason why you would do something bad to me outside and I would not throw punch on your face is because I think some believers are watching me and they're going to, they're going to tweet it and put it on Instagram that will suffer as you're throwing punch. I do, not, I do everything never to embarrass God with my life. That's who you are. So how to love yourself? Quickly, run with me on this. Number one, know yourself. Know yourself. You see, David testified of who he is. He said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. He, he, he came to turn with his identity. Some of us just look at yourself as a Janet, as a Frank, as, as a Peter, as you don't even see yourself as the child of a king. Let me tell you, the moment you begin to see yourself as a child of a king, you will begin to act like royalty. You will begin, there are certain things you can't do because kings don't do that. But everything starts with what you see of yourself. If you see yourself as a failure, no matter how much I preach, no matter how much any of the pastors or ministers in this church encourage you, you will always think that they're just saying it to make me feel good. I'm actually supposed to fail. That's not who you are. The greatest testimony about you comes from you. Know yourself. Let's look at John 1 verse 12. You got to know yourself. He said, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. You are children of God. You are a believer. Don't take that word for granted. Let it become a kind of thing that you flaunt to others. Who are you? Oh, I'm a believer. I'm saved. I belong to Jesus. See, Jesus is all over the Jesus is looking out to fix things in the world. Guess who is you looking for? He's looking for you. Jesus is not going to fix this world and the mess in this world without believers. That's why I feel sorry for politicians because they better start getting it right. Jesus is the only solution to this world. Period. And Jesus is waiting to use you. But it's even difficult for Jesus to use a man who have no clue about his identity. There's a man in the Bible called Gideon. He is so belittled himself that he was even arguing that of all people, it's me you want to send. Jesus said, no, you are a man of valor. You are a big dude. There's more to you than you see. So God, Jesus, even Jesus himself, was not only sure of who he was. I mean, he said this several times, I'm the way, I'm the light, I'm everything. Jesus was so conscious of who he was. He knew himself. He didn't only know himself. He wanted to be sure that others knew him. He said, what do you say I am? Who do you say I am? What do other people say? Jesus was so sure of himself that he even wanted to be sure that others are not getting it wrong. I mean, it's, okay. it's cool if after service today, if you ask some of your friends, who do you think I am? And they better tell you something good. Don't take anything wrong. Know yourself. How to love yourself, number one. Know yourself. How do you, how do you feel about yourself? It's affected by either the word 
all the world. If the world says to you that you are only fine when you are skinny, like you look, you watch all the wrong way, all the wrong way um, models, and everybody is some the bones is pointing out of their neck, and you just want to kill yourself fasting because you think you cannot be beautiful until you are skinny. Is it that you take the word or the word? This is where you put your judgments together. The world view about you. God's view about you. And your view about yourself is how to find your identity. Number two, understand yourself. Understand yourself. How do you understand yourself? Understand your gift. No human being is created without a gift. Breaking news. You've been sitting on all these days, you, you are, you are, you are 25, you're 35, you're 50 years old, and you still feel in your life that some people are gifted, you are not gifted. Lie, big lie from the devil. God did not create anybody without a unique gift in their life. Understand your gift. When you understand it and you serve with it, it will make room for you. It will launch you to prominence. It will launch you to a place that you cannot imagine. Just understand. And let me tell you, your gift is not just your gift is not to be a doctor. Your gift is not to be a lawyer. It's your gift and everything that God has given to you that will connect you to those careers. And so a lot of times there's more in your life than just your secular nine to five job. But that's what we pay the most attention in our life on. I don't want to enjoy too much on that. Know your uniqueness, your personality traits. We have a class for personality traits. Say Chinyere after now. Say Chinyere, I want to know my personality traits. Because I really, don't, I really don't think I'm getting it enough. I, I need to know myself. I need to understand myself. She's going to take you through the class. You're going to come back different. Ignite is about growth. Understand your potentials. You know, one of my biggest prayers that I pray every day, I, 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 I love the prayer of thanksgiving, which is my favorite, but it's something I never miss to pray about every day, is that God should help me to manifest the fullness of my potentials. Let me, let me ask you this, guys. How many of you agree with me that you'll be very disappointed when you get to heaven and God says that you only use 2% of your potentials? How many of you, feel, how many of you really feel you'll be disappointed in yourself? And God said, are you kidding me? There's so many things that you could have achieved. You achieved nothing. So my prayer every day is, God, let me die finished. Like Jesus. Jesus died finished. Jesus stood on the cross and said, it is finished. Because he had nothing else to do that he has not done. I want to die knowing that I gave it all. I don't know about you. Some of you are not even operating in, in 0.5% of your potential yet. Uh, your potential is not, is not to go to college and come out. That's not, that is good by itself. So you don't, you don't get me wrong here and say, Oh, Pastor, what do you mean my potential? I have the masters. No. So much inside of you. Amen. We said how to love yourself, understand yourself, and I've been listening gifting, your gifting, your uniqueness, your potential. Lastly, your vulnerability. Your vulnerability. I told you about my life with drinking and smoking. I never indulged in all those things. Not that I'm trying to paint a superiority. I had my own vulnerability. I understood so much that when it gets to my vulnerability, I run, I flee. You see, if I go to a party with 10 friends, 20 friends, everybody can line the most expensive champagne and alcohol on their table. I don't get freaked out. I'm not, I'm not intimidated. I don't feel low. But there are areas that do not joke. If your vulnerability is alcohol, that you have been struggling all your life, is the biggest deliverance you are looking for. Don't go where they are drinking. Understand your vulnerability. So you don't hurt yourself. How to love self, develop self. This is the biggest part of my message today develop self let me tell you you got to love yourself so much to develop yourself i, I just said something towards the beginning of this message i said 
how many of you look at yourself sometimes and say that the world is blessed to have you? If this world is depending on the likes of yourself to be a better world, you better be great yourself. You better be better. I thought that I finished all my education and everything that I needed to do. I high this certification. I think, I, to an extent, I think I was good for myself when it comes to education. But the moment the vision was put in my hand about three years ago that I need to, I need to lead a generation and, 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 and bring them to the loving grace of Jesus. I went back for another master's on pastoral care and counseling which I'm still doing now just because I want to be able to add value to lives when you see yourself as being valuable as something that will help others to attain their fullness in life you will never joke with your development I have a lifelong commitment to growth if there's anything that I am, I am so passionate about is growth I want to grow I want to grow because when I grow, I can add value to people. When I grow, I can earn respect from people. When I grow, I can feel good about myself. Somebody once asked me in a teaching that how do you build self-confidence? I said to build self-confidence, you have to be competent. How many of you feel good when you are competent? Come on now. When somebody can look at you and say, self-confidence comes with competence. If you give me the microphone to teach the word of God, I'm never intimidated. I will pick that microphone and I will walk. Sometimes to the glory of God and to the influence of the Holy Spirit, I don't even need to prepare too hard. It just flows. But give me the microphone to come and sing. Like Tola or like Tundu. My self-confidence will do what? So the more competent you are, the more confident you will be. That's why growth is important for your life. Never stop growing. There's nothing as terrible as being stupid. I just need you guys to know this. You got to grow. Commit to lifelong growth. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're developing yourself in various areas. You're developing develop yourself spiritually. Develop yourself emotionally. How many of you know that emotional, emotional growth is even more superior to intelligent growth eq is greater for your life than your high how many of us know that there's nothing like character how many of you have seen excellent sportsmen good basketballer good footballer that never finish well in their career because of a character defect that's why i tell parents don't just develop your children to get straight a's We've seen children that got straight A's and went to Harvard and just a little challenge in life, they took the gun and they killed themselves because of poor EQ. They, 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 they do not have that inner courage and determination to be, to be a fighter. You got to grow. That's why when you are going through stuff in life, whatever you are, grow, whatever you are going through, learn to grow through. So if every time in my life, every time in my life I experience certain failure, I sit back and evaluate the lessons to be, to be, to be taken in that failure to, to, for me to grow to the next level. Not only am I never going to make that same mistake that made me to fail, I will do my best to make sure that I help others not to make the same mistake. That is when failure becomes positive. One of my mentors calls it failing forward. That's what John Maxwell calls it. When you fail your life is still moving forward despite your failure. It's important for us. Physically, you also need to grow. How many of us, how many of us, how many of you prefer the way you look physically five years ago than the way you look now? Okay, do something. Do something about it. Do something about it. Go to the gym or mind the food you eat or something. You know, you know my spiritual name. Let me, because, because this is church people. Maybe gym is too secular. Okay, go to the temple maintaining shop. Because the Bible says your body is the temple, right? Let's get spiritual about it so you can do it. 
But some of you will say, which one is Pastor you saying we should go to gym? Is that the Bible? Okay, go to somewhere they will maintain your temple so that the Holy Spirit can dwell in it, not in a sick temple. Amen. All right, so how to love yourself? What's the first one? I want to know if everybody was with me. Know yourself, right? What's the second one? Understand yourself. What's the third one? Develop yourself. And the last one is to share yourself. There was nobody that did this like Jesus Christ. I love the scripture. He said, he said if you give yourself away, you will gain yourself back. It's, there's, there's nothing like sharing yourself. The, the, the essence of your development, the essence of your life. The reason why Jesus is walking in you is so that he will walk through you to touch the world. The Bible calls us light and salt to the head. You got to share yourself, guys. The moment I started teaching people the word of God, the, the moment I started engaging in Sunday school and in so many things, I started understanding God better. I was, I was improving myself. So I wasn't really losing. When you share yourself, you gain yourself back. Jesus shared his own life. He gave away his life for you to find your life in him. Over 2,000 years ago, we were still talking about him. We are waiting for him to come and take us home. But he gave himself away. Are you giving yourself away? The church is not a spectator game. The church is a participatory game. I always tell people, if you've been coming to church for three months, and you have not yet walked up to somebody and said, what can I do in this church to help? You just feel comfortable. You, some of you even have your own dedicated chairs, like you pay for the chair. So when the usher say, you have to sit there, you say, no, 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 no. You are so, that is not the way to love yourself. That is being full of yourself. Give yourself away. I, I cannot go to any church and spend two months in that church and not ask to do something. Please, can, can I take away the trash? Just, just let me do something. How many of you know that when you give yourself away, you feel good about yourself? Somebody once asked, how can I be happy? Just pay less attention to your happiness now and make other people happy. Do you know what happens? When they are happy, it's contagious. As you see them celebrating, you begin to feel good yourself. Learn to give yourself. Don't take yourself too seriously sometimes. It's not loving yourself. By default, we are created to add value to this world. So it's about time we get to our business as Christians. And the only way we can do that is to give ourselves to the world. Be the salt and the light of this world. Give, it a, give yourself away. Be at service. Some people kill their burden by going to volunteer in, in places. They go to volunteer. They, they, they go and volunteer somewhere. They feel good when they do. You see people happy just because of you. You feel happy. There's no way you, there's no way you can be sad with that. Learn to give yourself away. Don't be a spectator in a church. Be a participator. That's why the body of Christ come together. Anything, even if they don't have a department, even if we don't have a department that you can function, and the Holy Spirit has released a department in your mind, you start it. Say, so you know, I, I, I can't do anything, but if it's just, you just give me three people's, um, the, the three, um, uh, give me the name of the first timers every week. I'm just going to call them during the week and just thank them for coming to our church. That's my only job that I want to do for the church. That's beautiful. The Holy Spirit will say thank you. And you'll be developed. But until you give yourself away, you cannot truly really have yourself. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's rise on our feet. There's something that I always tell people. There are, there, are two, there are two things that you can be in every environment. You can either be a thermostat or you can be a thermometer. I learned that a long time ago from someone. You know how you are a thermometer? You know what the thermometer does? The thermometer will tell you about the condition or the pressure in the place. The um, thermometer will tell you now the, the temperature of this place and how hot is it? Um, it is. 
But you know what thermostat does? Thermostat will regulate. So don't come to church and complain that they're not even doing enough. I don't even like the way the ushers work. I don't even like the media. They can, they're not even getting it right. What are you doing? You are just being a thermometer. You are just measuring all, what, all, all the things you are doing wrong. You are not making it better. We got to wake up, guys. I'm going to bring this to a conclusion. I just want to read Romans 8, verse 1 to 2. Do I still have everybody in the church? Yeah. You see, the beautiful thing about ministers, when we finish preaching, we'll go through the back. That means you can't get me. If you are very angry with my teaching, I'm going to run through the back and I'm gone. But I got to speak this truth. Romans 8, 1 to 2. Um, I, like, I like us to read that scripture. He said, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as a personal Lord and Savior. For the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of a new being, has set you free from the law of sin and death. Never live. See, when you leave the church feeling all guilty and depressed about your life, it's because you really didn't get it. It's not about you feeling guilty. It's about you rejoicing that even in your state of worthlessness and sin, Jesus has paid the price. It's freedom. Who doesn't celebrate freedom? It's to be happy. It's to be, it's to be excited. You can hardly go out there and just tell the world how wonderful Jesus is in your life. And you know what the devil does? One of the ways the devil makes you hate yourself. You know, this teaching is about loving yourself and setting boundaries. The, one of the major reasons that the devil, one of the ways and strategies the devil makes you hate yourself is, is condemnation. The devil will tell you that you are not good enough. Look at you. Look at how you are dressed. Look at how you, look at, look at you. You, don't, you, 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 you. You just got out from jail and you think you'll make life. The devil will continue to condemn you until you just feel low about your life. You think that there's nothing to you anymore. But that's why the Bible said the devil is a liar. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Don't let him lie to you. Come to Jesus. That's why we're inviting. That's why we always give that invitation to everyone. How many of us here will bear witness that when you came in contact with Jesus, when Jesus came into your life, you started feeling good about your life? I don't know about you. It has been my testimony. I, I've never felt this good about my life until I met Jesus. Do you know why? Because, because he himself said, I have come that you will have life and that you have it more abundantly. That's what Jesus wants. So every time we invite you, faith is about invitation for an experience. So when we say, if you want to give your life to the Lord, please let us see you come out or raise your hand or bow your head and pray. We are only inviting you to an experience because there's an experience with Jesus that is undescribable. We, I can't even begin to say it. But it's just been amazing for me. So we just want to tell you, if today you do not have that relationship, we're giving you that invitation. It's open. You don't even have to pay for it. Jesus has paid the entire price for you to have a great life. Just want us to bow our head and pray.